Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 6.4, nth roots. We're going to start things off today with our vocab word, nth root. And nth root is defined as for any real numbers, a and b, so a and b are just numbers, and any positive integer n, and does have to be positive number, if a to the nth equals b, and then a is an nth root of b. So it explains it a little bit better here in this example. So think of x to the third as 64. Well, what times itself 3 times is 64? Well, 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Now, if we take the third root of 64, that would be 4. So 3 would be the third root of 64, or the nth root, right? So 4 is the cube root of 64. Next, we have a principal root. A principal root is a non-negative root. So, for example, the square root of 25 is positive negative 5, right? Because both negative 5 times negative 5 would be positive, or would be positive 25, and positive 5 times positive 5 would be 25. Well, what is a non-negative root? That would be the positive 5. The negative 5 would not be the principal root. And now, along with some more vocab words, we have some items here. This n we would call that the index of the square root, all right? This is the index. Here is a radical sign. This guy, this square root sign is the radical sign. And then we have the radicand underneath the radical sign. So let's take a look at some of these examples. First, we're asked to simplify. Number one. Now, if we do not have an index here, it is implied 2. All right, we have an implied 2. So now we're going to take the square root of 16. Hopefully we know that the square root of 16 is 4, positive negative 4. Now this 2, this 2 divides into any variable exponent. So this 2 will divide into variable, variable exponents. So this 2 divides into 8. How many times? Well, it's going to be x to the 4th because this 2 divides into that 8 4 times. Jumping to 2, the square root of 25, t to the 10th. Again, there's an implied 2 here. Plus negative, since that's in front, we bring that down. The square root of 25 is 5. Now again, this 2 has to divide into that 10. So it's going to be t, and then 10 divided by 2 is 5. So it's positive negative 5, t to the 5th. Now with 3, again, it's still a square root. It's an implied 2 here. We have a negative sign down, so I'm going to bring that down. But now, ladies and gentlemen, this stuff is all to the fourth power. What is inside the square root is to the fourth power. So I'm not going here and here individually. I'm going to take my 2 to everything, right? I'm going to take my 2 to that 4 because that 4 multiplies at, or is an exponent to everything. So... Then I have q to the third plus 5, because I did not touch that, to the what power? To the second power, because I divided that 4 by 2. Moving to number 4. Here now we have a 5, all right, the square root, or the radical sign, and our index is 5. Now what that means, we are taking the fourth, or sorry, the fifth root, we're taking the fifth root of 243. I will show you how to plug that into your calculators individually in class, but for right now, if I plug the fifth root of 243 in my calculator, I am going to get 3, and now this 5, remember, has to go to the variable exponents we are dividing it into, so it's 3a to the second, and then b, we also have to divide it in there. How many times does 5 go into 15? That is going to be 3 times. So our final answer is 3a squared b to the third. Here we go, last slide. Number 5. Again, we have a square root here. Now we are square rooting a 4, a negative 4. Remember that negative sign comes out of the square root. If we can remember back a couple chapters ago, as in i, the square root of 4 is... 2, so we have 2i. We cover the negative 4 by 2i. Now this 2 goes to that exponent of 4, so it's going to be x, 4 divided by 2 is 2, y divided, or sorry, y to the what? 
8 divided by 2 is 4, so it's 2i x squared y to the fourth for our answer. Now a 6, 6 changes, changes it up for us. Here we have an index of 5. How many times does that 5 go into 7? It goes into 7 one time, correct? So I'm going to put down t to the first. If you don't want to put down the first, that is fine. But do we have a remainder? Yes, we do because 5 only goes into 7 once, right? And so if we do this little thing, if we go old school where we subtract and then point and bring it down, what do we have a remainder of? We have a remainder of 2. So whatever remainder we have in square roots, go back inside the square root. So it's going to be t to the first outside, and then what's left over? Just t squared. Going to 7, 7 is the same situation. Now we have an index of 4. 4 goes into 6. How many times? Just once. So we can only bring 1q out. How many times does this 4 go into 8? It goes in there twice. So now we have an r squared times the square root of. How many q's do we have left? Because I did not use all of them. 4 goes into 6 one time with a remainder of 2 for our final answer. And then 8. We have the fifth root again of 243 times the quantity. Ladies and gentlemen, please pay very close attention because the parentheses are to the 15th, right? So we can't touch what's inside those parentheses because it's to the 15th. Please note that it would look like x plus 2 times x plus 2, right? We just can't distribute that 15 back in. So the fifth root of 243, again, you pop it into your calculator, you come up with 3. Now this 5, we want to divide into that 15. So it divides in there evenly, and it's going to be x plus 2, because that's what the 15 belongs to, is this jargon. And how many times does the 5 go into the 15? It goes in there three times for your final answer of three times the quantity x plus 2, that quantity to the third power. And that does it for section 6.4 and roots. Good day.